everybody. It is Mia with Chop with Mia. I am here on this wonderful fall Sunday afternoon. I'm, guys, I am so excited. So excited for fall. It is unbelievable. I can hardly contain myself. Um, but I uh, actually did a project about, I don't know, a week ago or so, and it got a lot of response online. So I thought I would go live um, and do another one. I just happened to um, actually, the owner of the boutique I help in found this globe for me at a thrift store um, just yesterday. So um, I was super excited because I am always on the lookout for globes. Um, and it's kind of funny. You can now see in Michael's and Hobby Lobby and all these other places, um, you can buy kits or this for home decor. And if you have uh, followed any of us Chalk Couture people, you will know that we've been doing this for a little while. So um, love that it's become a trend. Um, so I thought it would be kind of fun to do live so that you guys can can see how I did it. Um, certainly you can do it any way you want. Um, but anyways, I am an independent designer for Chalk Couture. If you are not familiar with the company, it is a direct sales company. Um, but I absolutely love the products and I love what I can do with them. So um, it, it's a nice little crafting stress reliever for me. So um, as I go through this, I will try to explain everything that I am doing. I will try to explain the products and how to use them. But certainly, if you have any questions, please, hey, Tarina, um, please feel free to comment and ask. I do have my little chat moderator in the other room uh, watching the live so that um, he can help alert me when there are questions. I've been having... I've got a MacBook now uh, for this. It's an older one, and I'm a Windows person, so sometimes I have a hard time scrolling. I can't seem to um, figure it out as easily on this computer. So he can alert me when there are questions or comments, and that way I can try to answer them for you. Um, so please be patient with us while we do this. Um, okay, so all this is is a world globe. Um, you know, one of those that we used to have in a classroom in your history uh, classes and stuff. And all I did was most of these, you can actually pull right off of the stand. Okay. There's, this is a plastic stand. I found uh, gold spray paint and I just spray painted the stand and the base gold just because it looks a little bit better than the plastic. Um, and then what you can do I'm just going to go tumbling. You can literally lift my hands of the way, lift this piece up and pull this piece down here down. And this globe comes completely off of the stand. And then you just have the round globe ball. And then what I do, let me see if I can find the piece. I use a skewer. <laughs> I don't know. Um, let me see. I had it here a minute ago. I can see if I can find it. So I can show you guys how I paint it because um, it took me one or two tries and then it finally hit me. I'm so silly. There is a skewer you can use and I had it, but now I don't know what I did with it. Um, but oh, here it is. Okay. So I just get, see this just a, like you do shish kebabs with, I get a skewer and because there's a hole that goes all the way through, I literally put the skewer in my grass <laughs> outside. I put the globe on top of it. And that way I can spin and paint. And when the top part is dry, I flip the globe over and I do the other side. So that way I can get a good paint finish from top to bottom. And I just use spray paint chalkboard, black chalkboard spray paint. Okay. So that is how I get it ready to go to use with my uh, chalk couture. Okay. So let me get my books set up over here so I can pull from them. And, oops, that's not going to work. Oh, I probably should have done this before I went live, huh? It is one of those days, people. I don't know about you. Okay, so this way you guys can kind of see. Ooh, screeching sound. Okay, all right. And if you're on, please like, share, and comment. I would greatly appreciate it. Is the lighting okay? Can you guys see this? Is the screen non-fuzzy? I just want to make sure. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do is prep my surface. Because it is not a um, item that I got from Chalk Couture, I want to wax it. And think of it like priming your walls, right? So you probably painted walls that you didn't prime. 
well, you find out you use extra coats of paint, it doesn't seem to go on as evenly, and it's just the uh, prepping thing. So we do the same thing here. We wanna take some wax, and I use um, Dixie Bell's Best Dang Wax. Some people use Min Wax. Um, Chalk Couture has a wax. Uh, it comes in little smaller containers. But all you want to do is prep your area because you want to give that chalk paste that we use a nice, clean, solid surface to adhere to. Okay? And you don't want the chalkboard paint that you've just spent time doing pulling up, um, you know, not that it would do here, but other surfaces it might um, up on here. So it's just like Karate Kid, wax on, wax off. Wax on, wax off. So you put the wax on and then you wax it off. I'm not doing the entire globe because I'm not working on the entire sphere. I'm just doing this space here. So um, some of them, some people say let it cure for uh, 24 hours. Um, if you're like me, you are super impatient, if that's a word. And I do it minutes, 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 minutes. Okay, I'm just trying to make sure I haven't missed any comments okay all right so we have prepped our surface now i'm going to find the transfer in my book um, that says uh life takes you to unexpected places and love brings you home i just really like that saying we have a ton of different transfers that would be perfect for a globe i love you to the moon and back i've done one on a smaller globe um, joy to the world. Uh, that's a new one for the holidays. That would be a fun one. Um, anything um, really that would be a fun decor item. So I've got all of my transfers located in books and I'm going to find the one. Oops, it's in my third book. I've got three full books full of stuff. And if I was smart, I would have done it like my other designers friends and categorized them. Um, put all my holiday ones in one, my travel ones in another. Okay, so I'm going to try to do this so it's facing the camera so that you guys can kind of see everything that I'm doing. But basically, so this is our transfer, okay? And you can think of it if you've ever been into a craft or hobby store and you see stencils. Stencils are similar, and I have some up here actually, and I don't even use them because they are, to me, they're difficult to use. Um, I have not perfected the stencil world. So this is a stencil, right? And I can put my finger through the stencil, okay? That's a stencil. That's a traditional way of making beautiful signs. The chalk couture way is I cannot push my finger through this. It is a screen mesh, okay? And the, the reason why that is important, at least for people like me, is if, as long as you don't have any air bubbles in the screen mesh, when I go to put my chalk paste on it, it makes a nice clean transfer of the um, saying onto my product, onto my surface. With a stencil, if I don't tape it down, like glue it down for me, I get bleeding and excess and it just doesn't look as good. So um, that's the cool thing. The other cool thing is we can use our transfers. Uh, corporate says 10 to 12 times. I know there's some designers out there who are on their 20, 25th time using it. So as long as you take care of it and clean it, then you're good. Okay, so now I will warn you, this is a rounded surface and it has taken me a couple of times of practicing and trying to figure it out. And I still, you know, it's still not the easiest surface uh, to work on. I will tell you that, okay? Um, What's that? Oh, I just um, spray painted it with chalkboard spray paint. Okay, and I can actually grab, let me grab it so you can see it. I am still here. And I saw that that fell down, no worries there. You guys will just see how much I've actually used it that I bought. Okay, so I used this to spray paint the globe. And like I said, I used my shish kebab skewer. I, you can pull these globes off of the edges. You just pull up and down and the globe can come off. I put this in the grass and then I put the globe on top of it, spray paint it, flip the globe and spray paint the other side. The stand, because it's plastic, I just used a gold, a gold shimmer spray, metallic gold, okay? And then that way I can get a nice finish on the stand. Um, it doesn't look like a piece of plastic holding this beautiful piece of artwork. 
kind of dresses it up a little bit. Okay, so I hope that helps. All right, I'm just grabbing, I've got some painter's tape over here because I have learned when you don't have an extra set of hands. Painter's tape, hey Beth, hey Di Diana, hey. All right, sorry guys, I'm trying to keep up. This computer does not scroll as easily. Hey girl, Andrea's joined. Oh my goodness. All right, so we're gonna put this on here and this I'm just eyeballing. The great thing about this one is I don't have to worry about it being perfectly spaced on the edges so it won't be uncentered. Um, it just kind of works. My husband was just mouthing something to me. I'm not a mouth reader. I don't know what he said. Huh? What? Oh, it does scroll. Yes, I know, but I don't know. It doesn't scroll very easily. He's a Mac guy, so he's like, it does scroll. Oh, it's not? Oh, you're right. It's not a Mac. It's <laughs> Chromebook, but okay. Oh, I'm doing if I can't. Okay. All right. So if you guys have any questions, I don't mind going back and answering anything. Certainly. Okay. So I'm going to do this in sections. Okay. Um, what I'm going to do is I've got painter's tape, and I'm just holding the top part down because I don't have more than two hands. And, you know, sometimes I will call my husband in here and say, hey, can you hold this down for me? <laughs> so some surfaces, it does help to have multiple hands. Okay, so one of our other products is chalk paste. Okay, and I'm going to use custard. Um, custard, I have found, is one of my favorite basics. Um, I think it's a neutral color. It's like a creamy white. It's not stark white. It does have a cream base to it. Uh, but our chalk paste, so this is the cool thing. This is what really sets our products apart. Chalk paste, okay, it's not like chalk paint like people refinish, refinish furniture with. It is a paste, it, but it does have chalk in it, so it does dry kind of quickly. Um, and this is what it looks like, if you guys can see that, okay. And we want it to be like a marshmallow fluff consistency. So you want to have some run to it but you don't want it to be runny, if that makes sense. Oh, okay, so the Globe. I actually found this at a thrift store. Actually, the owner of a boutique I sell in, I have found them at thrift stores. Um, so, and they're kind of, it's, it's kind of like a unicorn. <laughs> sometimes they're there, sometimes they're not. Um, so you have to be kind of patient. Um, you can also find them on like Facebook Marketplace. Sometimes people are selling them. Although I found that on the Facebook Marketplace, a lot of times they're selling them for like $30, $40. Um, this one, actually, I was super shocked. The owner found it for $4 at a thrift store. I usually try to find them for $10 or less. So um, that's usually my uh, go-to price. If I can find it for 10 bucks or less, then it's a winner. Um, but I do, it does take me a while sometimes to find them, but that's where I look. Facebook Marketplace, um, the buy, sell, trade sites, Craigslist, thrift stores. Um, I found that like places like TJ Maxx and Ross, they'll sometimes have them, but they're, you know, 20, 25 bucks and they're much smaller. So, or if you, if you have a school near you, you never know, maybe they're trying to get rid of some. So, um, uh, anyways, somebody's at my door. Um, so. You want this to be a marshmallow fluff consistency. I hope that helps, Diana. Um, the great thing about our product is, let's say that I did um, this, you know, life uh, takes you on unexpected journeys, right? And then at Christmas time, I go, you know what? I wish I had joy to the world on here. If I don't seal this with a polyurethane or some other type of spray, oh, it's an Amazon delivery. Go figure. We get those all the time. Um, if I wanted to put something else on it, if I don't seal it with something like a, a polyurethane spray or a shellac spray or something like that, I can literally take a disinfectant wipe or a wet paper towel, wipe this clean and put something totally new on it. That is the difference of our products is they're only, they're permanent for only as long as you want them to be. And when we're done, I'm going to show you that just because it has chalk in it, it's not like a chalkboard where it'll smear. I can run my hands across it and it will still stay. So I absolutely love it. This is what made me fall in love with this product. Okay, so I have stirred my paste up because we wanna make sure it's that marshmallow fluff consistency. 
I also have, we have these little squeegees. They're just uh, silicone rubber type. They're bendy. Um, and the great thing is we can use them over and over again. We just rinse them off. Um, so now the harder thing about this is usually we want to make sure there are no bubbles. Okay. When we lay our transfer down, because when there are bubbles, you can get that bleeding a little bit. So this I have learned takes just a little bit of working, but what I'm going to do is take some more painter's tape and tape down the bottom part. So it pulls that end and but I promise you guys, you can do this. It just takes a little bit of trial and error sometimes. But if I can do it, believe me, you can do it. I tend to be clumsy and uh, clumsy sometimes. So if I can figure it out, you can do it. All right, so what I'm doing is I've pushed down on the first word, okay? that I've got here to make sure that I don't have any bubbles in this one. I'm gonna do the same as I go, all right? And what I'm gonna do is do this first part, pull up the transfer, clean it off, because it does dry kind of quickly and we don't want the paste to dry on our transfer because then it gets kind of blotchy, okay? Um, so I'm gonna do this in sections just because it is kind of an odd surface with this rounded corner, okay? So we put as much paste as we want on the squeegee because we're gonna put all the excess back in and you literally just pull it right over top of that transfer area, okay? Which makes it so easy and nice. And I'm gonna move over to this other one. And again, I'm just holding it down with one hand. That way I don't get those bubbles or I hope I don't get those bubbles. All right, and again, work my way to the next area. It's creeping on me. I need like a little rubber stop like the trucks do for their tires. Okay. I know this looks awkward, guys, but it really isn't that awkward. You can do it. It's because the thing keeps moving. Usually I have something at the base stopping it from moving. Okay. And you can tape the heck out of this thing down. I just did not do that. Um, but you can do that. And my transfer, to be honest with you, I have used it a lot. So some of the stickiness has gone away. All right. I'm going to pull this up, hopefully. So I do have a few little areas that uh, bled on me a little bit, but I can fix that so easily. And I'm going to show you how I do that, okay? And I'm going to find something to put at the base of this so it doesn't move on me. That's the other thing I forgot. Okay, so I'm going to show this to you guys. So this is just a disinfectant wipe, or you can use a wet paper towel either way, okay? All right, so this, I'm going to show it to you. See the L? The bottom of the L, see that blotch right there on the top of the T for U2? And then I have a little blotchiness there, okay? But other than that, it transferred really well. So what I'm going to do, and I got some paste up here. All right, like I said, this is just a disinfectant wipe, or you can use a wet paper towel. I've got, okay, this is just a little rubber silicone tipped thing. I'm going to take it and rub it. Oh, you guys can see that. Rub it around the area and then take my disinfectant wipe and clean up the paste. All right, and I'm going to show this to you in a second so you guys can see how easily this cleans up. I absolutely love, oops, can you guys see what I'm doing? So I'm just taking this disinfectant wipe, and I am using my fingernail, and if you don't have fingernails, then find a Q-tip um, and just wet the end of the Q-tip and use it to clean up these little areas, which I do have too. I have these little... Here, I'll show you. They work really well. I have these little Q-tip ended things. I just dip it in some water 
and so I can show you both ways. And literally just work my way around the areas where I want to clean up that chalk paste. Uh huh. Oh, it's, um, I actually found them on Amazon. I'll create a link later. Are you talking about the Q-tip ended one or the silicone rubber ended one? Um, because I'll put a link for both of them, but they're both off of Amazon, to be honest with you. Um, the silicone rubber tipped one is, uh, if you look under, like I said, I'll put links on it, but if you look under, I think it's like clay molding tools. It's people who work with clay often uh, use them. Okay, I'm just dabbing some areas to get the excess water off. Okay, all right, so now as you go, see the L and the T are now, and these little watermarks are gonna dry, that's just from the water. So as you guys can see, I cleaned up the areas that were bleeding. So now those are good. All right, so now let me put something so this thing won't slide on me. That was the trick I did before that I forgot. All right, any other questions, bud? Are we good? Okay. All right, hope that helps. Okay, so now I've got my transfer. I'm going to take that same... Uh, disinfectant wipe and I'm just rubbing it across the transfer okay Oops. and this is the other great thing when I lift this up I'm gonna have the whole transfer on my table but as we just say it's just chalk it comes right on up so I don't worry about ruining my table I just clean it with a little Windex a little water and we're good to go um, so I don't worry about my my surface underneath too much. Now we do have inks and when I'm working with the inks then yes I do I'm a little bit more cautious because they are a permanent product um, but as far as the chalk paste goes I am good to go. All right and the reason I'm cleaning it off even though I'm not reusing that um, area is um, I just don't want it to hit the top part where I've already worked. Okay I'm just Cleaning this off. So now I'm going to take a second and I'm going to blow dry this area that I've already done because I want it to be dry so that when I lay the transfer on top, it doesn't pull it back up. Okay. So hang with me for a second while I blow dry it. So there is a trick sometimes people use where they'll take the backing sheet these come on and cover up that area so that you don't have, um, so you don't pull it up, but um, that's up to you. All right, so what I'm going to do is try to just match it closely, but since they're not, it doesn't have to be exact. As long as I'm within the ballpark, I'm okay, because I just don't want my letters to overlap. All right, again with the painter's tape. I'm going to be a little bit more generous with how I tape it this time. And again, only because it is a rounded surface, okay? Um, it makes it just a little bit more tedious. If I had a flat surface, I would have already been done with this. I can promise you that. Um, but I love this project, so I'm okay with the extra time it takes to do it. Wait, I don't wash with water what? No. Oh, 
Oh, I, how I wash my transfers, if that's what you're asking. Um, you can wash it with water or a disinfectant wipe, either way. Um, it works about the same. I did, I wiped it clean. You just may not have seen it, but I did, I wiped it clean. Okay, what's that? Okay, hopefully that answers your question, Cheryl. All right, guys, so I think I have this pretty close. This edge over here is a little bumpy, so I'll hold that down when I do it. But here we go. More custard on my paste here. And I've got this wedged. So hopefully, oh, no, it still keeps to me moving on me. I did not do very good. That's probably going to bleed just a little bit in that corner, but like I've shown you guys, we can clean that up. That I'm not concerned about. Okay, I'm covering this area. And then again, I'm coming down here. The key really is keeping this globe so it doesn't move on you. And I have not done a very good job off of that. So that is a lesson learned for you guys. Put something on the base of it so it does not move or get somebody to hold it for you because that's probably my biggest problem, not the transfer or the paste. It's that this base keeps slipping on me. Um, I probably should have done a better setup that way. All right. Okay, so I've got my paste on here, and I should have rubbed off the excess, but as I'm pulling it, it seems to be doing okay, because I didn't put it on too heavy. Ah, look, look at that, guys. You see that? So you guys can see, this was the transfer, and I didn't put it on too heavy, um, because I knew I my time was limited, it was a little bit of an angle, so... Um, I rubbed just a little excess off as I went, but usually you rub the excess paste off and put it right back in the container. So now I keep all these little edges of painter's tape on the edge of my desk so I can reuse them. Um, okay. So now what I'm going to do, what you guys can't see, I've got a tin of water sitting in front of me. Um, and I'm going to just throw my transfer right into that tin of water. Okay. And I'm just going to let it sit just because again, I don't want that paste drying on the transfer okay um, because if it does then um, it just gets harder to clean and it may uh, ruin the transfer Oh, gotcha. Yeah, if I'm still using the transfer, a lot of times I'll um, either dip it in the water and then wipe it down with a wet paper cloth or a paper towel and then blow dry it so that it's dry so I can continue using it. But I do wipe it. Um, but I may just not do a full up clean like I would um, at the end of the project. Hope that helps. Okay, so here we are. Life takes you to unexpected places. Love brings you home. That second part worked much better. I think it's because I did a better job taping it. And um, I did have it wedged a little bit so it didn't move as much on me. So lesson learned, that's what we wanna do. All right, so now I'm just gonna turn the space a little bit and I'm gonna work that really pretty flower um, here. And this is where you, know, you can get a little creative and you just do you know, whatever floats your boat and the colors that you like and what you work with. So I'm going to show you guys the process that I did it. And sometimes it's just, you know, looking at my stash and going, hmm, this looks pretty and that looks pretty. Um, but let me get into my books where I've got my flowers. I didn't pre-pick them out because, you know, this is the fun part for me. And if you're not a naturally creative person, that's okay too because you've got – your palette in front of you. You've got your transfers in front of you. So you don't have to think of what to do. You just kind of look around and go, yeah, that's pretty. Okay, I like that. I'm gonna use that. And and you just go from there. So um, 
I am looking. And I think, okay, I like this one. This one's similar to the one I used before, but slightly different. So I am going to use this flower. I don't know if you guys can see that. So um, this one, I don't think I've, oh yeah, it does have some sticky on the back, but when we first get our transfers, they are usually uber sticky. So what we want to do is lint up the back a little bit. So I always use my shirt. You can use a towel, you can use whatever you want, okay? All right, so, and again, I'm trying to do this so that you guys can see as I work. So I'm just gonna pick, so this is the other great thing, is there is, you know, I can color outside the lines a little bit, right? So I'm going to say, all right, I'm gonna use this as my center. I always try to have a center piece that then I'm going to work off of, okay? So this will be my center, flower. And I do like that um, couture teal that I used the last time. So I'm going to use that again as my center flower because I just love how that this this poignant color kind of draws your eye right to the middle. Okay. So that's my thought process. I am just taking this is just a, um, I probably should show this. This is just a makeup stir. Again, I got it off of Amazon. If anybody wants the link, I can send it. Um, but I like it because they're long and plastic and I just re-clean them every single time. So I just throw it in the thing of water when I'm done with it. Okay, so this is gonna be the fun part for you guys because this will move a little bit quicker. You can kind of see how working with a smaller transfer in space can go very quick. And again, like I said, if I was working with a flat surface, I probably would have already been done with this project to be honest with you. Um, okay, so again, my squeegee, I'm gonna dip it in my paste here. Okay, just taking some of the excess that would have been falling off, put it on the edge. And I'm going to cover the entire transfer. And you can go up and down, side to side, it doesn't really matter. But after I put it on there, I take the excess. I don't know if you guys can see this. See that bulge on the top? That's excess paste. I literally just scrape it right back into my jar. So these jars look small, and they are, they're three ounces, but they last a while, you guys, because we literally just want a small film. And I'll put this up here so you guys can see it. If I had spatial skills, I could figure it out. Um, I don't know if you guys can see. See, it's not really a lot on there. You can actually even just see the flower through the transfer. And then you pull it up, and voila. I had a tiny little bleed down here. But again, like I did before, I'm going to take my little Q-tip thingy, dip it in the water, so you guys can see this. Go over that space. And I have a little bit up here. Okay. That's just a paper towel I'm doing to pull that excess water off. And look, that um, area that had bled is gone. Okay. So one flower down. Very pretty. I love that color. All right, so my squeegees, a lot of times, I'll just dip them in the water and wipe them off, and I can reuse them. I mean, I have a ton of squeegees, but, you know, the cleanup at the end. I'm trying to reduce my cleanup at the end. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is work off of this flower. So I think I'm going to love, because it's fall, I'm going to choose this orange peel color, okay? Or, hmm... I think actually I want to go just a little bit darker. I'm going to go pumpkin pie. Okay, because I think we're all, a lot of people, there are some people who do not like pumpkin spice this time of year. I will promise you that. Um, but because a lot of people do, we'll go with the pumpkin. Okay, so I'm just looking for another flower here. I like this one. Okay, so I'm choosing this one. All right, and what I'm going to do before I use it, before I open up my paste, I'm going to dry this because I'm going to overlay my other flower because I don't want them just three flowers and then stuff. I kind of want to make it a bundle, almost like a uh, flower bouquet, right? They're not separated completely. When you look at it, they kind of overlay a little bit, right? So that's the same concept I want to use here. So I'm going to take my blow dryer.
and I'll take my finger and kind of, okay, so look guys, look at this. It's not smearing because it's dry. It's dry, okay? So that's the cool thing about this product is um, that's how I can not seal it, have it in my office, my home, whatever, and then when I get tired of it and want to put something new, I literally just wipe it clean and do something new. Oh, okay. So I did a live on this one. So you see this right here? Oops, it's upside down. Oh, spatial skills. All right, see it says 2 slash 23. This I learned from another designer, and I have to say it was genius um, for cleaning up. So I have three uh, folios full of transfers, okay? And this is where it helps me even when I'm doing this and I'm using a lot of different transfers. I have all, I had already had all my folios numbered, you know, book one, two, three, and then I numbered my pages. Well, then the designer said, well, why don't you number your transfers? So the two is book two, 23 is page 23. So that when I'm cleaning up at the end, all I have to do is go, oh, that's where I stored it. Because, you know, sometimes it's like a jigsaw puzzle. These, these transfers are you know, take up the whole page and you can't just mix and match where you put them because then it messes up all your spacing. So I marked every single transfer with the page, the book and the page number so that when I'm cleaning up, I know exactly where to put them back. Genius. So simple, but it has saved me so much time. So you're welcome. All right. So now um, what I want to do is I'm going to take this, um, I'm going to take this flower and I am just going to, now I don't want to put it directly up and down, okay? I mean, you can. It's totally up to you. But for me, I like offsetting things a little bit. I always work in odd numbers, and I like offsetting things, or at least as much as I can with odds. All right, so I'm going to take just the edge of this flower, and it's going around the bottom quarter of this flower, okay? Um, and again, this is just me eyeballing it. Now, when you do layer, I suggest that you don't push too hard over top of the flower you're layering on. I mean, you can push a little bit, but don't, um, because if you didn't dry it well enough, it will pull it up. Um, and you just rather be safe than sorry. Okay, I'm trying to make sure all the air bubbles are pulled out. Again, I'm dipping into my paste. I know you can't see it, I'm sorry, but I do dip in my paste. And then I'm covering up, and I do see a few air bubbles. Again, it's a curved surface, so that's probably the hardest part. Um, I'm putting the excess right back in my container, and slowly pulling this up. Fantastic. Oh, I missed a little bit of edge of that flower, but that's okay. All right, so now I've got, oops, I've got the start of my bouquet, all right? So I'm going to let that air dry just a little bit. Again, I'm wetting my squeegee, and I have a paper towel here. I'm just wiping it off, covering up my container of paste and putting it back into my inventory because, again, we don't want it to dry out. And if it does get a little hard or uh, thick, you can just squirt a little bit of water in it, and it will bring it right back to life. Okay? All right, so now I want to work on the top part because I'm going to let this kind of air dry just a little bit. So we're going to do another flower because, again, I, like I said, I like working in odd numbers. So I'm going to do my third big flower. And, again, I just like this one because it's similar to the one on the bottom but not exactly the same. Okay. All right, so this one I'm going to do, again, on the same side I did the other one because I don't want to be too far away from the words. I want somebody to be able to look at this at a certain angle and see the whole artwork. And we're going to actually pull some, some uh, stuff off to the side here later. So, and again, thank you for watching. I know this is going to be a, a little bit of a long live just because um, it is a little bit more of a detailed project. So I appreciate you guys hanging in with me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. If you can like and share, that would be fantastic. All right, I'm going to use grape soda. I like the brightness of these colors, the orange, the teal, the purple. And I'm going to tell you, I know nothing about the color wheel. This is just me going, hey, I like these colors. So you know what? They're going to work. You can ask Dylan. Sometimes I'm yelling at him going, what's the opposite color of red? You know, because I'm trying to make sure the colors will match. 
but in the end, artwork is artwork, and this is a form of artwork, and so whatever you like, go with it, okay? Because somebody else will like it too, I promise. Um, and even if they don't, if you like it, that's all that matters. Okay, again, I'm just stirring my grape soda up. All right, I've laid my transfer down and pushed most of the air bubbles out that I can think of. I've got my squeegee, dipping it in the grape soda. We doing okay on questions, bud? Okay. Trying to make sure I get all the areas. And again, if I run off the edge of my transfer, you know what, it's just chalk, it's okay. I can clean that up. Now when you're layering, that cleanup gets a little bit more difficult, but you can still do it. And most of the time when you're layering, if you mess up a little bit, you just keep layering and you cover up your mistake and it's fine. All right, I'm gonna pull this, and I'm pulling it kind of slowly because I don't wanna drag that paste. I just want it to pull up nice and pretty. And it did, voila. Okay, Oop. so there we go. There's my odd number, there's my threes, okay? And the colors are a little bit more vibrant in person on the camera, they seem to be dulled out a little bit. They are a little bit more vibrant. Um, so while I'm cleaning that squeegee, let me see if I can scroll down and make sure we're taking care of you guys. Okay. True, especially with the transfers that have lots of pieces. Yes, absolutely, Kay. I'm going to tell you, that out of all the tips I've ever received, that's probably one of my favorites is numbering those darn transfers. I got to tell you, I should probably send a, a thank you gift to the designer. Um, she's on another team, but we obviously are friends and uh, she does a great job. And we sometimes uh, swap tips and tricks. And that's the other thing I love about Chalk Couture is even though we're direct sales, we all support each other on the team or not. And I just, I just love that. Okay, so now I wanna add a little bit of greenery. I think I wanna have, um, like I did before, I want to have some leaves, right? And I'm just gonna put, in this where I'm not gonna do odd numbers at least yet. I'm gonna do two little leaves because to me they're pretty, but they're not, they're just little accent pieces. So let me find where I have, see this is where if I had organized my books better, I would know exactly where my leaves are. I don't know. Um, or I should say a sprig of a leaf. I don't want like a whole fall leaf. I just want like the little palm. You guys know what I'm talking about, a little palm leaf. And I know I have it, because I've used it. And as I see stuff, I'm gonna pull it out, because I see, there, I wanna use that one later. I wanna use this later. As I see stuff, I'm trying to grab it, that way you guys don't have to sit here and watch me flip through and try to find stuff. Hmm, maybe. I'll look at this one. Okay. Oh, I like that. I love this, okay. And, all right, so is everybody enjoying their weekend? I am so excited, it's fall. Does anybody else love fall as much as I do? I mean, it is my favorite time of year for all the reasons, the colors, at least in Virginia, I'm in Virginia, and we get the you know, different colors on the trees, and the days are a little bit longer, and um, you know, it gets cooler, uh, cooler mornings and cooler nights, and oh, it's just fantastic. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Saw a leaf there. Actually, that's kind of a neat one. I haven't used this one yet. We're gonna use this. And I'm gonna go with the green just because a leaf to me is green. Now, I have not used this transfer before. It is, see that sheen? It is uber sticky. Um, so I'm gonna fuzz this one up a little bit, but that's the leaf I'm gonna use. Okay. Again, I'm fuzzing that up, and I am going to choose the emerald. Okay, because the one thing you do have to think of is because it's a black base, sometimes some of the colors don't come through as nicely as they look in the jar because it's a, it, you know, it's got a really dark background. So, ooh, 
it's sticking to my fingers. All right, so I'm going to open up my emerald and stir it up just a little bit. Oh, gotcha. Yes. I know. I'm I'm just the city over from you and I get it. I'm um I feel the same way. Okay, guys. So, this transfer has like a little bit of a branch on the end of it. I don't want to use that part. I just want to use the leaf. So, I'm going to take to the very end of that leaf. I'm going to butt it up right next to, let me make sure that orange is dry. Right next to this blue flower, almost overlapping it a little bit. And laying it flat and it's going to overlap that purple flower a little bit it's going to over you know that's okay i love the layering it's like i said i think of it like a bouquet of flowers and i love it when i have a bouquet of flowers that has a whole bunch of different stuff on it so i'm being careful not to get that base and again i'm going to pull this up and i have a pretty leaf and because I'm going to use this quickly, I am going to put another one without cleaning it, which you can do that sometimes. It really kind of depends on the transfer. But these small ones especially, if, you, if you're quick about it, you don't have to clean them before you do it. Okay, and again, same thing. Now you can only do it several times because that paste is going to start to dry and then it's going to get blotchy. Ah, oh, so pretty. I love that. Maybe I will do threes. I'm going to do one more up here. I said I wasn't going to do threes, but now that I'm looking at it, I kind of want that balance. I don't know. It's my OCD kicking in. Who knows? All right. This is probably the last time I can do this. I can feel the paste is starting to dry just a little bit. All right. So now we've got three leaves. Okay. Yay, love that. Okay. Any questions from anybody? Um, I am certainly not the expert, but like I said, I've done this project a couple of times. Um, and I kind of learn something every time I do it, to be honest with you, because it is um, it's a very fun project, but um, I just learn something every time. Okay, so now I want to do, this is gonna be fun. We're gonna blend some colors on this one, okay? So this one, I got my long string of little leaves here, okay? Um, what I'm gonna do is out of, I think, out of these areas down here. Now this one I'm only gonna do two of because, I don't know if I wanna use that one. Let me see if I have another one that's a little bit wider. Um, I'm going to do one at the top and one at the bottom, but I'm going to blend different colors of green because to me, I feel like leaves do that sometimes, right? They're not all just one color. They have variations of color. So let me get this, uh, transfer up. I think I'm going to use, oh, or no, maybe this, this one's bigger. This one's from the Bon Appetit one. I like this one. Okay. I think, I don't, it might be too big. All right, let's see. I know you guys are getting to hear my, me talking to myself, right? Like, does anybody else do that? I totally do that. My husband's yelling I'm a weirdo from, from the other room. <laughs> okay, so I am not going to use that one, but I am going to use this one. It's a little bit bigger. The leaves are a little bit farther apart. So let me make sure this green is dry. So now for this one, I'm going to take, I think I'm going to take the um, Green Envy, okay, Green Envy, and the Lime. Where is my Lime? Yes, I think there's, okay, so those two colors kind of match a little bit. This looks yellow, but it's, it's a Lime Green, I promise. And I'm going to, so this kind of curves at the bottom. I don't want that curvy part. So what I'm going to do is push this transfer in between the purple flower and the green, okay? And I'm gonna start right where that first leaf is. 
So my curvy part's actually going to go into that bottom blue flower. I'm going to turn this real quick so I can see it, and then I'll turn it back for you guys. In the book? Oh, I'll put a, um, a link for that too, but, and they come in all different sizes, but these are just folios that I get off of Amazon, and they're all different sizes, and the great thing is um, they've got plastic sleeves in them, and so you can pull the plastic sleeve out and you just stick it to it. Some people have done them on sheet protectors, but I've heard not to do that because it may, um, some people have success, some don't, but I would say out of the designers that I know, 80, 75, 80% of them use these folios, and I'll put a link to it, okay, so you can see it. Um, they're, they're quite handy, and I love it because they just, you know, they tend to work very well. <laughs> okay, good. Now I don't feel so bad because I tell you, I do it all the time, all the time. All right, so yeah, this is my, oh no, this is kiwi. I need my lime. Where's my lime? Lime and kiwi must look a lot alike because I just mixed them up. Um, hold on, guys. Oh, there it is, there it is, there it is. Oh, my goodness, all the way over there. Lime green. Okay, sorry. Lime green and green envy. I thought this looked a little yellow. I was like, oh, kiwi would work fine, too, but I'm a little obsessed with the lime. I don't, you know, when I first bought it, I was like, mm, I'll get it because maybe somebody will want it, and, you know, when I do a class or something. Okay, no, I'm kind of obsessed with it. It is a beautiful green. And of, of course, like I said, fall is my favorite season. So any fall colors, that burnt orange, the yellows, that mustardy yellow, the greens, all the different shades of green. I mean, I just love it. So I've got the two different pastes here, and I'm going to hold this up so you guys can see this. Now, there are different techniques for doing this, okay? The one I'm about to show you is just the one that works for me on this, um, but I'll show you both, actually, and that way, um, if you guys want, you can do this. All right, so here are my two colors, okay? I'm going to get two different squeegees, and I cut my squeegees down in thirds. Sometimes I have these little small ones. All right, so I'm going to choose one color first. I'm going to go with the lime, okay, and I'm just going to put a little bit of the paste on my squeegee, and I'm going to just dab it in different areas, okay? Just dabbing it. Now, when you mix colors, you can't put the excess back into the container because then it's really just going to ruin the original container. And then I'm going to take, you know what? I'm going to take the larger squeegee and the darker green, and I'm going to pull it all the way through. And this way, all those greens get meshed together into one beautiful, hopefully, <laughs> it's kind of like a science experiment, you don't know what's going to happen, um, beautiful arrangement of leaves. And again, I'm just pulling it kind of lightly because I'm layering, and there we go. Um, I don't know if you guys can see this, I'm going to do it at the bottom with the other techniques so that you guys will know, but that's just dabbing it, and unfortunately, the camera's not really picking it up, but it does have the variation of colors, I can promise you. It's kind of nice because the tips are a darker green, and then you've got that. It's just, it's very pretty, the variation of colors in it. Okay, so now I'm going to come down here at the bottom and do the same, but I'll show you kind of what other people do. And this is fun for some people because they get into like a finger painting mode. <laughs> um, you can become a five-year-old again. All right, so again, I'm going to take that uh, lime and just kind of dab it in the areas I want. And then I'm going to dab the green in different areas. And what some people do is they'll either lick their finger or they'll dip it in water, and they run it all the way around, just like finger painting. Okay, I'm dipping my finger in a bucket of water, and you literally just roll it all over, and you're going to make one big mess of colors. But again, you get a variation of the colors. Personally, I use the first technique more than I use the dabbing of colors, unless I'm doing an ombre look. If I'm doing ombre, where I go from like 
a light yellow to a dark yellow or whatever. And I'll show you I did one. Then I'll blend right where that ombre, where that transition happens. Um, but if I'm doing an entire area, um, I tend to use that top technique first. But really, no difference. I just um, prefer that dabbing and, and pulling them all through um, rather than the other way. Okay. All right. So let's see here. What else can we do? I don't think it's done yet. I think it's missing a few things. So I am going to take, I've got, um, I think we need to kind of pull back over this area so where the eye starts to migrate that way. So I want, I think, my school, I like that, like I was saying, I want to pull some of this fall color. So I'm thinking this school bus yellow is going to be a good one to use or mustard yellow. There we go. Mustard yellow. Because I want a little bit more of that orangey color. I want to pull in that orange from that flower into other areas. So I'm using mustard yellow. And again, I don't want something really huge. I just want a little sprig. So I've got this one. All right. And again, I'm going, oh, let's make sure that's dry. Ugh. All right, so I'm going to, it's got a long stem on it. I'm just gonna make it float down here, but I want it to stick out just a little bit and flirt with these little words up here a little bit. Say, hey guys, we see you over there. And I'm just placing it, and like I said, I can't see totally where this is. I just know it's somewhat coming through here. And, you know, it's a bouquet of flowers, so it's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect, I can promise you. It really doesn't. Okay. All right, so I'm dipping my squeegee in that mustard yellow. Pulling off the excess. A little bit of the stem. And there we go. Voila. And I want to do, again, I am balancing what I do on the top, I want to do on the bottom. Okay, that's just me. So I'm doing it down here as well. Again, I'm kind of pushing so that it sticks. And, oops, got a little bit of bubble there. And I'm pulling off the excess. And there we go. Okay. So again, to me, I am trying to balance it um, a little bit. Let's see. You think we should add another one? No, I, I don't know. I might hold off. I might, I might add another one, but I'm thinking that's good for there. All right. So because it's a bouquet of flowers, I do want to add some like pinks. Okay. Because um, even though it's not spring, I don't want to miss out on these beautiful um, hot colors that we've got. So I'm going to choose wild berry. Okay. It, you can't see it on the screen as well, but it is like a hot pink. All right. Um, and I've got this, which I love these. They're like little, little, um, flirty flowers. I don't know how to describe them, but I love them. Um, and I think I want to go, hmm, I think I want to go, let's see if we did it. I'm going to go underneath the leaf and in between these two, okay? And again, I don't want it to stick out, maybe a little bit past the leaf. So I'm gonna put that there. Grab another squeegee, because you know, obviously my clean off the squeegee and <laughs> use the same one has gone out the window. Um, okay. And we're gonna do this. I love this, it's almost like a fuchsia such a pretty color, but it's going to add a nice dimension to it. Okay. And I want to add one, let's say over here, coming out between this leaf and making sure I'm not running into the words over here. Just barely. Again, I'm just flirting with those words. We're saying, hey guys. All right. All right, so now, there we go. I think I'm just gonna add one more thing and we'll be done. I want to add, we have a color called Cherry Blossom. 
which is a very faint pink. It's, um, yeah, cherry blossom. It's a very faint pink. Um, but I think, let me take a look. I'm thinking I want to add maybe something in between this leaf and this orange uh, mustard yellow or maybe coming down. I think I'm going to add a couple. And then I think we'll be good because then I think I'll start to overcrowd it and it'll be too much. At least in my opinion. I don't know. I mean, I could go all day. This is fun for me. So it's a nice stress reliever because I can hyper focus on, um, so I've got a little container of spritz of water. It's a little thick, so I'm splitting two or three squirts in there. Um, I can hyper focus on this project and accomplish something in one sitting session and my brain isn't running all the tasks I've got to do at work this week. Um, I can have just a little bit of break. You know, my son's not napping anymore, but you know, if he was, it would have been a nice, uh, while he's napping, um, you know, whatever, lunchtime, just a little, little break for this. I mean, I'm on for an hour, but it's taking me longer because I am on the live. Um, I'm kind of talking you guys through it, but I mean, look at how beautiful this project's going to be at the end. All right, so this is just a little sprig with that cherry blossom, okay? Added a little something there. I think I want to add one over here. And I did not wait to see if my fuchsia was dry, so I'm really hoping I don't ruin that. I get to talk and then forget. One over there. Maybe one down here. Again, just little pops of lights and darks and different degrees of color, I think, is always pretty. Okay. And I think, because that's three, I don't know, maybe, maybe I'll add, see, this is where I start getting out of control, people, because <laughs> they're just so pretty. I just want to keep adding stuff. Four, and we'll add one more so I keep with my odd numbers. And that'll probably be the last before this starts to go pasty on me, dry and pasty. Okay, so that is it. I know y'all say that is it, really. That was a lot of work, but look it. So here's my transfer, and here's my bouquet of flowers. And again, it was just me looking at my colors, going, okay, what time of year is it? And it is a little bit more brighter than it's showing up on the camera. I'll take a picture of it and show it to you guys at the end. Um, but it's just me looking at it going, okay, what colors do I like? And what flower looks pretty and how can I, um, how can I balance it out a little bit? So, um, like I said, the great thing about this is, is if I don't seal it with anything, I can erase this and put joy to the world and put more cherry blossoms or, you know, what do you call the evergreen leaves with the little cherries, um, put in their mistletoe and, and different stuff. So, um, I don't know. There we go. That's the globe. I hope you guys enjoyed this live. Um, please like, share, and comment. If you don't see, whoop, wrong side, if you don't see the live written up here in the corner, that means you're watching the replay. So please make sure you tag my name, Chalk with Mia, or um, hit hashtag replay, and that way I'll know that you've joined me, and if you have a question, I can answer it, okay? Um, I've got links to my website and my VIP page up in the title. Please feel free to join, sorry, only for non-designers for my VIP page. I offer a lot of tips, tricks, and uh, specials in that VIP page, and I'd love to have you. So if you have any questions about the product, about becoming a designer yourself, or um, anything else, I'm here for you. All right, thank you everybody and I hope you have a wonderful rest of the weekend. Thank you, bud.